No worries. How do I know when it started? Or has it started? We're, we're started, Johnny. We are here. Okay. We've got people trickling right. in. Welcome, everybody. Thank you so much for being here. We're excited. This is uh, quite interesting technology, right? I don't really know what's going on here, but I'm ready. Audience, you would not believe this. When we were backstage today, Johnny told us he has never used Zoom before. That actually no. blew my I'm mind. A, I'm a Google man. <laughs> I'm a Google meet man. Put in the chat if you've never used Zoom before and if you had to use this for the first time to be at this incredible webinar. And also let us know where you're joining from. I, we already have, who's already here? We already have almost 150 people. They're trickling in. We want to make time for everyone to come in. Put in the chat where in the world you are joining from today. We got Brazil, Dublin, oh, really? London, Singapore, Italy, New York, Croatia, Portland. Oh, really? Ooh. Let's keep going. Toronto, we've got some Canadians, Manchester, Canada. Hello. Okay, Whoa. I'm going to keep reading those out. I'm also going to give you a poll because today Johnny is talking about a lot of things and we want to know what you are most excited about of his presentation. So I'm going to start the first poll. Vote. Let us know. Wow, this is cool. By the end of this, Johnny, you are going to be asking me what is my affiliate link to refer you for Zoom because you are going to love this tool. It's yeah, so this, is, this is actually giving Google a run for its money here. <laughs> Can I vote first? I don't know. Ah, host and panels can't vote. I'm not allowed to vote. No voting for you, but you can tell us, is there a part of your presentation that you are most excited to share about making well, money, multiplying you your know, earning? You know what the reality is? I think people want to know how blogs make money, but actually the, the numbers, the number two and number three are far more, like the information is far more beneficial to people because it changes you from making like a normal salary to like getting wealthy. Okay. I actually don't even know what a PDN is. So I'm most excited. I'm excited to learn about that. Okay, who else do we have? We got Northern Ireland, Bulgaria, Houston, New Jersey, California. Hey, Johnny, love Kyle, Kyle says. Oh, nice. This is so cool. Oh, Kyle, oh, Kyle come to Jordan. <laughs> I'm, doing, I'm doing a charity trip in Jordan with my mom um, next month, and Kyle was supposed to come, but he's got an injury, so he's out. He's oh, out no. Okay, well, we got lots of fans here in Norway, Germany. Please, if you've just joined, let us know in the chat where you're joining from. And also take a second to fill out this poll. Let us know what are you most interested in learning about today. I'm really excited to pass the mic over to Johnny. So I'm just going to start my little spiel so I can be done, Johnny, and you can just start teaching us all of this stuff that we are here for. Right so if this very first webinar with Safety Wing. Welcome. We are so excited you're here. I'm Sam. I have the pleasure of hosting and moderating this webinar series. I've gotten to meet incredible creators like Johnny over the last five months since we've been doing these pretty much every week for five months. So it's been such a joy. And when I'm not doing this, I host my own podcasting community called The Freedom Lifestyle, which it sounds like Johnny is completely living the freedom lifestyle. Would you agree, Johnny? Yeah, but I mean, more work goes in behind the scenes than it appears. But yeah, it's a nice life. <laughs> So if you don't know Johnny Ward, Johnny is an Irish blogger and a travel content creator. He started his blog One Step Forward in 2009 and has since turned into a multi-million dollar company. He's visited every country in the world. Is that true? Yeah, it's true. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And is on a mission to visit North and South Poles and climb the highest mountain on every continent. He lives by his motto, dream big, travel far and live full. Love it, Johnny. Read it. At the end, we'll see how much time we have left for Q&A. Um, we're just going to go with the flow. Johnny's got a presentation. We'll see how long he goes today. But if there's time, we're going to do a Q&A at the end. So I already see someone put a question in the Q&A box. Amazing. Mm -hmm. Put your questions there. I'll come back on and we'll do a bit of fireside chat with Johnny and I. And we'll get those questions answered. What? These little polls and everything all over the place here. This is wild. 
telling you, Zoom is where it's at, Johnny. Welcome to the bright side. And so if you, if you are new here, this webinar series has been empowered by a brand called Safety Wing, which is actually how we know Johnny. He's one of our ambassadors. He'll tell you a little bit about that later on in the presentation and invite you to join him to be an ambassador with him. Uh, but Safety Wing is building a global social safety net for remote workers and nomads. If we're going to have these blogs, get paid, travel around the world, create this content, we want to make sure that we are protected in this pursuit. And so Safety Wing is creating a suite of products with all of us in mind. Uh, most notably is Nomad Insurance, which is our affordable health and medical coverage. Works just like your favorite subscriptions every month, one flat fee, no matter if you're, if you're traveling to every country in the world or if you're traveling to just one or two countries that month, one predictable price. Uh, so that's a little bit about Safety Wing. Again, we'll talk a bit more about the Ambassador Program later, but I think we're ready to hear from you, Johnny. Are you ready? Yeah, I'm, re I'm ready to talk. I've got no idea how to use this technology, but yeah, I'm ready to, I'm ready to get going. You are going to rock it. So why don't you get sharing your screen? We got some more people here from Montreal, Ecuador, British, but in Colombia, India, Ukraine. Amazing. And then I'm also going to show you the results of the poll. I don't know if you were able to see these earlier, Johnny, but this is what people want to learn about. This is the split in, terms, in between the group. We're supposed to do the next poll later, but I really don't want to forget because now I didn't realize, I, th I really thought only a handful of people would show up. I didn't realize loads of people were going to come. So I actually want to know the answer to the next poll. This one's a bit of like corporate boring question. The next one's more interesting. <laughs> well, the good news is, is people are going to learn about all those things that they listed today. So, you know, if you were in the, the 2% that voted for the last one, don't worry, he's going to cover that too. So this is a would you rather, I love questions like that. It really brings me back to my youth. Would you rather make a million dollars but work in an office, make $500,000 but work remotely full-time from your laptop, or make $100,000 work remotely 10 to 20 hours a week from your laptop? Tough question. Actually, it is a tough I question. I would rather make 10 grand a year and work remotely. 10 to 20 hours than, than 500 grand in an office personally. I think but I'm the last one too. Yeah, make 100K, but work remotely 10 to 20 hours. So one more second. I know it's a tough, tough call. Vote three, two, one. Oh, I thought it was going to stay up the whole time. We can put it back up, but this fine. gives ah, you an okay. idea. Nice Most to see. people, 75% 70, of people agree with us, Johnny. So this yeah. is, these are our people. All right. Okay. So can you see my screen? It's looking so good. And we can see you. you. Even better. All right. I think okay. you're going to ask that. Okay. Good luck. I'm here if you need anything. Yes. Enjoy Sweet. everybody. Yes. All right, team. Uh, like I said, I don't really know how to use Zoom. Let me pop that chat up so I can see what people are saying. All right. Cool. So. Hello, everybody. Johnny here from OneStepForward.com. I don't know if Safety Wing also pushed this event or if it was just me. So if it's just me, I guess all you guys know who I am already and what I do and how I live like a bit of a weird life. <laughs> some people think it's disastrous and some people think it's quite inspirational. So if you're in the latter group, I'm going to chat a little bit about uh, what it is I do and, and also the journey that I took to get here. And then I'm going to explain in very simple terms how blogs make money, um, which if you're, just, if you're just a fan of blogs or, or, or reading blogs and searching on Google and stumbling across blogs, that'll be quite a revelation. If you work online already, a lot of it will be quite obvious. And then what I really want to talk, oh, I just realized there's a typo on my, on my presentation, no surprise. <laughs> um, I really want to talk about uh, having niche websites and a PBN, which is a private blog network. We're going to talk about that later. And that's basically how I multiplied my earnings to become a millionaire rather than just being like another blogger living holiday to holiday. Um, so that's it. So very quickly, uh, if you've never read my story before, and sorry for those of you guys already know this, I'm Irish, obviously you can hear my accent, but I live in Thailand. 
Um, I'm in my new house. I just built a house last year. If you saw my social media, I used that as like clickbait to grab you guys in here. Um, a lot of people lie about making money online to sell a course. That's not me. I don't sell you guys anything. If you follow me, you know, I don't have any courses. I don't have any products. So I don't, I'm not trying to sell anybody anything. But I genuinely have made quite a lot of money from my blog over the years. And it's allowed me obviously to be free and, and build this big house. It's my home office and, and visit every country in the world. So originally, again, as you got a lot of you guys know, I come from a single parent background. I just grew up with my mom and my sister and my granny was next door, but she, uh, she's gone now. So it was uh, just women and me. Um, and then we were on welfare or, or uh the dole we call it in Ireland from when I was maybe three or four to about 15. So for 10 years, and then my mom became a social worker and we were, were quite broke and I could never travel. Long story short, I ended up teaching English in Thailand. Then I started my blog to try to show other people from single parent backgrounds and stuff like that, that you don't need to come from a rich family or come from a private school education or have the right surname or, or live your life without swearing or alcohol. You can still have a cool life. So I started blogging about that kind of stuff and it, it took off. Um, I wrote actually a blog post when I made my first million dollars and it went viral. And then that kind of built my traffic up. And now I get a few million readers per year and a few hundred thousand followers on social media. And more importantly, it allowed me to, to live the life that I wanted to live and take care of the people that I love and to start a charity where we build all these projects and, and kindergartens and malaria clinics and stuff. Anyway, I'll explain more about that in an email blast after all this. So that's my story. I ended up making over $3 million um, from my online stuff. And that varied from working sometimes not at all. Obviously, if you follow me, I've been, I've just climbed Mount Everest. Uh, I just got back like a month or so ago. So that was two months, obviously, completely offline. But then also when I'm here in Thailand, I try to put the work in as well um, to catch up. So sometimes it's easy going and sometimes it's 12 hour days, but it's always a bit different when you're working for yourself and when you're making real money, it's a little bit more worthwhile. So I know a lot of you guys also want to work online. You want to travel the world for sure. I couldn't recommend it high, highly enough. I hate the thought of having a real job and making someone else money, having to ask for time off to go on holidays, having to worry all the time. So I completely understand why you guys want to hear uh, what I'm doing and, and hopefully I can help you do that. All right. So the screen should be shared, please God. Um, let's get into it. So how do blogs make money? Um, I've done, I'm, I'm really busy basically with all my travels and climbing these mountains and North Pole and everything. However, on the rare occasions that I have a month or two or th in Thailand, if people really harass me, I've done some coaching for some eager people over the years. And that's basically what the presentation is going to be today. It's going to be an introduction to show people how the online blogging world works. Because I understand as a consumer of blogs, you've got no idea, right? So basically, there's four ways that blogs make money. And a lot of you guys will know some of these terms and some of you will have never heard them before. If we just start in the top left-hand corner then, affiliate marketing, that's basically how I ended up with Safety Wing. We were paying my fee to allow you guys to, to watch this for free. So you should be thankful. Um, affiliate marketing as a blogger is when you essentially promote and sell another company's business, a third-party business. So Safety Wing, for example, uh, who are hosting this event, they're a, a, like a digital nomad insurance company. So like, obviously, I'm, I've lived in Australia and Korea, here in Thailand and Malaysia, blah, blah, blah. And I used to travel and live in places. And they do this kind of like travel insurance for people who are living overseas in Bali and Thailand or whatever, 10 bucks a week or so. And it's great. And I personally use it. So I wrote a big, I wrote one blog post explaining who safety wing are and what they do very simple it took me maybe an afternoon um i personally used them so ethically it was an easy thing for me to promote all my friends that live here and work online in thailand also used them so i wrote this big blog post emailed it out to my mailing list i don't know how many it is i've got a guy who manages a formula say fifty thousand people um i put it i put it on social media that i now use this product 
genuinely use it. And I think that if you're going to, if you need travel insurance, like in the nomad style, this is the best company to do it. So I wrote one blog post. It lives on my website permanently. Now, if anyone reads that blog post and thinks Johnny's not full of shit, this company must be all right. And they purchase that insurance. I get whatever, 1%, 2%, 3% of the, the, um, the money that they pay to the company. Very simple. And one, two, three, four, five dollars doesn't sound very, sound very much. I know that. But when you have thousands, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of visitors reaching your website every month, that adds up very, very quickly. So affiliate marketing, then, as you can see, it can be quite lucrative as long as you've got a lot of internet traffic. When I first started blogging 10 years ago or so, or a bit more, I had no idea what any of this stuff meant. And I would just go and write content like, and then I'm in Zimbabwe, and then I did this, and then I hitchhiked, and then I slept rough, and da da da. And nobody cares when you start out as a blogger like that. But that's what blogging, I thought blogging was. Now I understand it's, it's more to help other people who may want to do what you're doing or see what you're seeing. So then I had a load of crappy content on my old school blog before I, I made it all nice and everything. No, I, there we go. You can earn 10% of the referral income. So $4. Okay, thanks. Um, $4 I, I make per sale and safety wing. Uh, and then I don't know, can you tell, can you see how much I've made over the years on safety wing? I don't know how much it is. I, I guess it's five figures anyway, but it's great because I still use them. And do you know, even on a side note, even when they hired me to do this stuff and I've done some other stuff with them, I asked them to give me free insurance and they said, no. Can you please speak to the boss and see if you can sort that out? <laughs> Okay, so affiliate marketing, as a travel blogger, there's a whole different hosts, host of different potential affiliate partners. I can, if I blog about, I live in Thailand, obviously I'm in Chiang Mai. If I blog about Chiang Mai, I, and then I do like a detailed three-day itinerary or something, at the end of the itinerary, I can put some recommended hotels, and then I would get an affiliate off that hotel sale as well. And then what I did back in the day before I understood, I just, and this is what you should never do as a blogger for any bloggers in the crowd. You can't just sign up to be an affiliate and just throw loads of these links into articles. People are not going to click on them. The key to making money with affiliate marketing is first to create a quality piece of content that actually helps. Like Safety Wing, for example, are the best digital nomad insurance. So I can write a very easy piece of blog post called digital the best digital nomad insurance so when people are searching on google for the best digital nomad insurance they stumble across my article and it's obviously hot traffic they're looking for digital nomad insurance they found a guy who knows what he's talking about and he promotes it and this is when it starts getting a bit more technical um for a blogger for people who think they want to be bloggers I'd say like 25% of your time is, is talking about cool things and, and stuff that you want to do and bucket list items. There's a lot of back-end SEO stuff that goes into making money as a blogger. So if you just look at my shared screen here, the second point, I don't know if you can see my mouse, is when you're doing affiliate marketing, it's very important to do something called pillar posts and cluster content. So my goal then is to try to sell a product like Safety Wing Insurance. I write one really good blog post about it, but it doesn't end there. I then have to write 10 other pieces of content or five or 20. Anyway, a lot of other pieces of content around that topic to give me what's called topical authority. Um, so I'll write about all the crazy things that I've done around the world, like get malaria in Burkina Faso or breaking my leg in South Korea or uh, slipping a disc in Sydney, Australia. And I'll write... 10 of these articles and all of them will link back to the fact that either I did have insurance at the time or I didn't have insurance at the time, but all these articles are pointing back at this one piece of content called the pillar post. So that's sending a signal to Google saying that of all the content on Johnny's website, this is the most important post about insurance. And then it's also sending a signal to Google saying that all the other people who are trying to talk about digital no ban insurance, Johnny's article must be quite legitimate because all these other pieces of content are linking to it. So that hopefully will be enough 
to make you be on page one of the Google search results when people are searching for best digital nomad insurance or where to stay in Chiang Mai or something along those lines. So that's what affiliate marketing is. In the travel blogging industry, it's quite a nice, friendly, low key industry. Like lots of most bloggers or most travel bloggers are broke and it's very easy going and not very business orientated. And that's nice. So that means you can consume content without feeling like you're constantly being sold to. Whereas in other niches, for anyone who follows like any, any money stuff on Reddit or Twitter, that's full of snake oil salesmen who aren't trying to write good content, who aren't telling you interesting or, or helpful things, and they just want your money. So they're just promoting products that they've never used, that they never plan to use, but they get a lot of commission off it. So you have to be very careful when you're consuming content, whether you can truly trust the person who's promoting the product. And that's when I see here, with ethics. Like for me, I don't have, I don't sell any products to people. I don't, I rarely put sponsored stuff on my social media, almost never. So when I do talk about a product, I hope and believe that people know that I genuinely am using it myself. And that's a much more secure, reliable way to make money in the long run for people to, to learn to trust you and for you to pick and choose when you promote a, uh, a third party business. Okay, so that's affiliate marketing. That is how bloggers make, I would say on average, 30% of their income, certainly travel bloggers. And mostly for affiliate marketing, they make a little bit of commission off hotel bookings, off travel insurance, and off plane fares. That's generally how travel bloggers make money from affiliate marketing. Okay, next is the one below it, ad revenue. I think like if you were to ask your parents, how, or even yourselves, how do you think bloggers make money? You probably think that most of the money is made from those annoying ads when you're trying to, you just want to find out the best rooftop bar in, in Madrid. And then you come across, you land on my website or another blogger's website and the content might be great, but it's full of ads, like every, between every paragraph. My site is also like that. I'm sorry. I've got bills to pay. I'm off to the South Pole in, in January. It's 90 grand, so I need the money. Um, that's how people think bloggers generally make money. And in that respect, that probably makes up about 50, 60% of most bloggers' income. The way that works is you get paid X amount of dollars per thousand visitors to your website. Okay. So if you have, if we look at the first point here where it says RPM. That means revenue per meal. Basically, it means how many dollars, US dollars, you get paid for every thousand visitors on your website per month. Okay, you with that? How many dollars per thousand visitors on your website per month? And that can range between $1 and let's say $100 because all the visitors to your website aren't equal. Um, if, for example, you write a piece of content that attracts a lot of traffic from India, from Bangladesh, from Sri Lanka, countries that have got a lower GDP per capita, the RPM is lower because those people from those countries don't have as much money. So they're less likely to click on one of those ads and buy something. Um, whereas far and away, the biggest RPM, the highest RPM is with American traffic because those guys love to spend the, the debt culture. Thank God for that. <laughs> Um, in the travel industry, the average, let's say, RPM is about $15, $20 per thousand visitors. So that means if you only get a thousand visitors on your whole website per month, you'll only make 20 bucks. But if you've got 10,000 visitors, you'll make 200 bucks. If you've got 100,000 visitors, you'll make two grand. And if you get a million visitors a month, you'll make 20 grand. Um, so traffic is everything. Oh, as always, uh, tra the tra in the travel blogging industry, the RPM is quite low compared to other industries. Like if you're blogging about like financial investments, you'll make 10 times as much money because the people who are reading about financial stuff are rich and they're more likely to click on, on all the ads and buy stuff. Um, I should have said this at the start of the, the chat, actually, is that I'm not very professional and I don't really focus so much on this stuff to be honest I just try to live my life 
create content that I like and it's managed to do me okay. But I do, of course, have to keep an eye on where I make my money. So this is still my bread and butter, but there's a lot of bloggers who are very business orientated, also in the travel blogging industry, where perhaps their lives aren't as cool as mine. They don't get to travel so much and they focus on money first. I, don't, I personally, I don't do that. I focus on my lifestyle first and, and the money comes after. And that's, I guess that's a personal choice. So when it comes to ad revenue, the most professional bloggers won't even create content about India, Sri Lanka, or Bangladesh, even as travel bloggers, because they know that the RPM is low and they'll just keep churning out 10 things to do in New York, 10 things to do in Cancun, 10 things to do here and there, because the RPM is higher when you're writing about mainstream destinations that Americans and, and British people go to. I personally find that really boring writing that kind of stuff. Sometimes you got to do it when you need to pay the bills, but I try to stay away from it. Okay. 30K plus. Basically, if you want to be a blogger or if you are a blogger or a new blogger, you don't even want to think about this, meth this method of making money until you have at least 30,000 page views per month. In fact, you shouldn't think about making money from your, from your travel blog at all until you have 30,000 page views per month. The damage with these annoying ads that also my site has, you're going to damage the, the small traffic that you have. Better to build a community, and build an audience first, and the money will come later. So please just bear that in mind. And down here are probably the three biggest ad revenue partners, for better or worse. Um, when you start a blog and you start getting traffic, 10,000 readers a month, 100,000 readers a month, million readers a month, whatever, you don't just automatically make money. You have to apply for um, a platform that will install ads on your website. And the most common one that you guys have probably heard of is Google Ads. Uh, and that's what everyone installs when they first start getting traffic. And it is atrocious. We talk about the RPM. Google Ads pays like less than 5% of, of these other companies. So you've probably heard of Google Ads. Whether you have or haven't, avoid it. Never use it. Black and white. The two biggest ad providers for blogs are Ezoic and Mediavine. Um, and without doubt, Mediavine is the best. They pay more. That doesn't slow your website down. Uh, but I think you need 50,000 page views per month before they'll accept you. So you need to be on top of your blogging world before they let you in, which is kind of nice because it gives you time to focus on, on, on how to become a blogger, on affiliate marketing and blah, blah, blah. And then by the time you're accepted to media buying with your 50,000 views, um, then you're, you're already a semi-pro blogger, so you're good to go. And once you hit that, sky's the limit. On a side note, just from like a life coaching point of view, like making your first 100 bucks online, like I remember it distinctly, is so game-changing. 100 bucks very quickly becomes a grand. Like, and if you can make a thousand dollars a month online, there's no reason why you can't make 10 grand a month or 20 grand a month or 30 grand a month, really. But that first hundred dollars is a game changer. And that can take between six to 24 months of blogging in the right way, knowing what you're doing before you get the payoff. And after that, uh, the sky's the limit. All right. The third one is the most controversial and also the most lucrative is sponsored content. This is a bit technical for SEO, so hopefully you guys understand a little bit. Oh, sorry, I see some questions coming in here, guys. How can you check how many views your website gets each month? There's something called Google Analytics that you sign up for and, and, and install that code into your website and it tells you every month. Um, all right, the third way to make money is something called sponsored content. All right, SEO, and hopefully you guys know, is search engine optimization and that is basically the best practices that you can apply as a blogger to ensure that when people search for something on google you're the first second or third result let's say you want to be on that first page of results because i'm sure you guys listening you don't click on the second page third page fourth page when you're just trying to get a bit of information you google how to boil an egg and you click on the first second or third non-sponsored answer right me too everyone does that 92 percent of people do that so you need to be on the first page of the results or you're nowhere and you can never make money how do you get on the first page this could end up being a, like a five-hour talk on its own. So I'm not going to get too deep into it. But 
every website in the world is kind of judged um, by the Google algorithm on a scale of zero to 100. And that is called your domain rating. Okay, so Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, TikTok are all 100 out of 100. And if you start a brand new website, it's zero out of 100. Like small bloggers are like 20 out of 100. My blog's like 60 out of 100 uh, or, or something like that. You need obviously to be as high as, you need that score to be as high as possible. The higher the score, that, the higher the score out of 100, the more chance of Google spitting you out on the first page. When your domain rating is zero, you're never going to be on the first page. So you need to work on increasing your domain rating. How do you increase your domain rating, right? You need people, other bloggers, other news sources, other websites to link to your blog, okay? So for me, because I did, I visited every country in the world, I climbed Mount Everest, I did this North Pole Marathon, I rode across the Atlantic, blah, blah, blah. The media constantly um, picks up those like stupid things that I do, like BBC or CNN or whatever. And they're like, Irish guy, he rode across the Atlantic, world record, da, 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 da. And they all link to my blog. Um, and Google can see that these reputable websites are linking to one step forward. So my score shot from 20 out of 100 to 60 out of 100 because Google's like, oh shit, okay, this website must be trustworthy because all these other websites are linking to it, okay? That is the way to increase your domain rating. You need as many people linking to you as possible. And everybody knows this. So sponsored content then is other companies who are trying to make their websites rank, whether they sell flowers, whether they're a restaurant in Dallas, they all need to rank better when people are searching how to send flowers in Thailand, where to get the best steak in da Dallas. They want their website to be page one also. So what they want is me as a blogger to link to their business website, okay? And they will pay quite handsomely for you to do that. That is called sponsored content. The dangerous thing about it is it's against Google's terms and conditions. If Google knows that this company, this steakhouse in Dallas has paid Johnny at onestepforward.com, and for me to write about the best steakhouse in Dallas, which I would never write about in vegetarian, but just for an example, if Google knows that they've paid me and I've taken money and I've now and I've linked my blog to their steakhouse, if Google knows I've taken money for that link, they'll kick me off the search engine results. So it's against Google's terms and conditions. However, this is a billion, billion, billion dollar uh, industry. It's not some underhand um, way of doing online marketing. Emirates do this, Etihad, the Thai tourism board, all these people buy links from me. And um, so it's completely common. The only reason Google, Google don't like it is because they want to be solely in charge of the rankings. And basically they can charge people to, to be in the sponsored results, blah, blah, blah. They don't want people trying to manipulate the search results. So that's why they don't let people buy and sell links. However, everybody does it. 99.9% of people do it. And I'm sure I've made over a million dollars in this method alone. And as a complete like rough guide, your domain rating, which remember is your score from zero to 100, um, you basically would add a z whatever your domain rating is, add a zero to it. And that's how much a link on your website you could charge to link to a, to a third party. So if this, if mine's 60, for example, which it is roughly, and this Dallas Steakhouse wanted to buy a link, it would be $600, but I wouldn't link to them because you shouldn't eat meat. But anyway, it'd be $600 if they did. And that, when you break Google's terms and conditions um, for SEO, that is referred to as black hat SEO. Um, white hat SEO is the opposite. And that's the SEO that Google wants you to do. That's basically when you just create really cool content and people naturally share it. So you haven't paid anyone to link to it, which still happens. But Black Hat obviously is much faster for companies. So companies come out aggressively and buy and pay you to link to them because they don't want to wait for, for it to happen organically. And it's so, 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 so lucrative. There's forums and, and underground uh, marketplaces where authors at Forbes and BBC and all this are 
get they get paid for their article and then they're also getting like a backhander like two grand for people to li link to their their uh, businesses so it's a huge industry so that's sponsored content and again until your dr your domain rating is let's say 30 or above you don't want to be doing uh selling sponsored content um so it'll, it'll take at least a year i would imagine as a blogger to get your domain rating up to 30. okay so that's sponsored content and then the fourth method um is only really once you're established and you're already making money once you've built an audience um both on social media and as a blog audience and a mailing list on your blog it's it's quite easy to to make money from whatever it is you do i don't do any digital products and stuff but i'm sure you guys have seen online people selling courses how they do what they do um and if you've got a, a loyal audience they're going to buy it you can do speaking gigs like this one i'm doing tonight um but as you can see you have to be quite established so that also is quite lucrative you can also run trips that's what i do if you guys follow me i run a lot of trips um to like weird places that's cool meet cool people make a bit of money um but the short long and short of that is once you have an audience that trusts you because hopefully you're trustworthy then um you can create products that your audience are going to like whether it's a trip or a digital product or whatever but by that once you once you're established enough to do that you should be making 5 10k usd off your blog anyway and then you're free which is the goal all right so that's four the four main ways people make money from blogs affiliate marketing traditional ad revenue which is x amount of dollars per thousand readers sponsored content and then on the social media and off page stuff and social media also like with instagram for example on a verified account like mine with like a hundred thousand followers i'm sure you guys are curious like what people charge for that i'm not big into social media i worry about the damage it does to society which is why I'm, i don't live on it like doing a million stories every day but it's about a grand a post if if you were to like sit, like be selling loads of sponsored content i don't do that because i, I worry about the the ethical issues all right let me change this page okay so as a blogger then your bread and butter of course is creating blog posts uh like i said your blog post has to be on page one for whatever your blog topic is let's use an example of bangkok itinerary so if i got, if i'm going to write a blog post called uh, the perfect Bangkok itinerary. A lot of work goes into that. That's not something that you just do on a whim. We're going to talk a little bit just before I leave um, about keyword research. When a blogger is creating a piece of content, whether it's sponsored, whether it's ad revenue or affiliate, or whether it's a passion blog post, you have to do at least 15, 20 minutes of keyword research before you create any piece of blog content. If you don't know what key, keyword research is, very quickly, it's the exact search term that people are most, are searching for most, okay? So some people might search for three days in Bangkok. Some people might search for two days in Bangkok. Some people might search for Bangkok itinerary. Some people might search for what to do in Bangkok. And and, and a million other different variations. And they're all essentially looking for the same content, right? What to do in Bangkok. But the search volume, how many people are searching for each one of those terms, specific, those specific terms is very different. So in my mind, I might want to write a blog post called three days in Bangkok, right? Because I've just spent three days in Bangkok. Instead of just jumping on my blog and writing that content of about three days in Bangkok, I would go into a, a search tool. I use something called Key Search. It's like 10 bucks a month. And I would type in three days in Bangkok into this search tool. And this search tool would tell me how many people every month are searching for the exact words three days in Bangkok. And it might be 2,000 people. Two days in Bangkok might be 10,000 people. Bangkok itinerary the people searching for Bangkok itinerary it might be 50,000. So if I had just, if I had not done my research, I would have created my content. I would have named the blog post three days in Bangkok and I would have spent a day or two writing that. 
And actually only 2000 people per month are searching for that. Whereas if I wrote exactly the same blog post, but because I now have uh, researched how many people are searching for each term, I now realize that Bangkok itinerary has got 50,000 people searching for that. Whereas only 2000 people are searching for three days in Bangkok. Then I'll write exactly the same content, of course, but I'll name the, the blog post Bangkok itinerary. And that's why keyword research is important. And I blogged for four years without knowing this. Completely was unaware of it. I thought I would just create content and people would find it. And it's just not true. If you don't do your keyword research, you will never be on page one. And if you're never on page one, no one will ever read it. You'll never make any money and you're stuck in your job. So keyword research is very important, regardless of the types of blog posts that you're going to write. Okay, let's talk about the, type, the three types of blog posts. Generally, there's three. Okay, the first one, which is kind of beautiful, to be honest, when you start your blog, whether it's like modern narcissism or whatever it is, we always write about ourselves. And then I did this, and then I did this, and then I did this, right? But you're new. You don't have any audience. You don't really understand SEO. You're not on page one for any search results. You've got no social media followers. No one cares what you had for breakfast in Varanasi in India, right? So you spend, for me, I spent over a year writing like that, complete waste of time, learning curve. You guys now won't do that because I'm telling you not to. You don't write content like that because people don't care. If you've been to Varanasi and, and had a nice lunch there, you need to do your keyword research and write three days in Varanasi, what to do in Varanasi or whatever this, the popular search term is after your research. You, you barely have to mention that you're even there. And you create a lot of content like this, helping people, showing people the best things to do, how to do this, how to do that. And then after a year, two, three, four, five years, or however long it takes, the beauty of your honesty and hopefully your helpfulness is that you do build a community. And suddenly, or suddenly, eventually, um, that community will be interested in what you do as an individual. And then you can come full circle again. So then you can start talking about what you had for lunch in Varanasi in India, because people are actually interested again. And that's the beautiful full circle. Um, so yeah, passion, passion blog posts are important because they keep your fire for creating content. But as a new blogger, just know that you'll never make money from it. It'll never rank for anything on page one in Google, so no one's going to read it. Focus on, on writing useful content. And then once you're big enough and you've got an audience, then you can come back to writing about what you're passionate about. It's got to be slow. Another type of blog post then, when you're about to, when you sit down in the office and you're going to write a blog post, uh, you will choose which one of these three blog posts you're going to create today, or hopefully multiple, depending on how fast a writer you are. So with, if, with, if it's a passion project, like I need to write my Everest, my story about climbing Everest, and I plan to do that maybe next week. So I'll sit down and I know that it's going to be a passion blog post. Um, I'll still do my keyword research, of course, but I know now with an audience that people will be interested in it. If I'm going to do an affiliate post, um, then I'll sit down and I'll know today I'm going to write a blog post where I'm going to promote a product and I need to think, okay, what's the best way for me to make money from this blog post? So the most important thing is, as always, that it ranks on page one. So I do my key, keyword research. I write the big blog post with the promotional link, promoting the whatever product that is I'm promoting. And then I have to create all those satellite pieces of content around it to point back to that. So everything has to be done with a structured plan. I hope that's what you're understanding here. Nothing's done on a whim. You don't just sit down and write with a pen and paper. It's, unfortunately, it's not romantic like that. You have to think about the strategy. Um, and then the third, as we discussed, is this black hat SEO. This is the sponsored content. Easy, this is the bottom line here. <laughs> Easy money, but big punishments. To be honest, I don't care what Google say. It's such an easy way to make money. Um, you can hide that content on your website. So if it's a sponsored piece of content that you didn't write and you don't care about it, you can do what's called orphaning your content. So basically that content gets hidden um, deep in your website and your actual readers who you actually care about never see that piece of content. So the client doesn't care because they still get that link out of your website. They're still getting the value of the link out of the website, but your audience who you actually care about don't have to deal with 
hearing about five things to do in Las Vegas or some boring article like that. So those are the three types of blog posts that bloggers have to sit down and think about creating each time. Everything is done with a strategy. All right. This is the most important thing in terms of my personal journey, actually, and how I ended up becoming like independently wealthy. So first of all, the, the brutal reality of blogging, I don't want to kind of move that. Yeah. The brutal reality of blogging and actually working uh, digitally and, and being a digital nomad and all this right, is that 95% of people are broke. And I was broke, very broke for a long time too. Um, and it has to be something that you're willing to be broke for a long time and, and keep chipping away at it until, uh, until you break through. And most people quit in the first year or two because they don't see the money, right? People see my story and see my house or see me climbing Everest and they know it's expensive, blah, blah, blah. And they want that. And I understand that. I felt the same, but it takes years to get there. And most people aren't willing to, to put the, the struggle in. But the payoff is worth it, I promise. So why are most bloggers broke? Well, you guys now know the four ways you make money, right? With the ad revenue, with the affiliate marketing, and with the sponsored content. And unless you're a unicorn, unless you create the biggest travel blog in the world or top 10 biggest travel blogs in the world, and that's highly unlikely. Like, I'm a big dreamer, um, and I believe that you should aim for everything. But you also have to be realistic. It's unlikely that you're going to be the biggest travel blogger in the world, right? That's just the, the sheer numbers mean it's unlikely. And that's fine because um, you can still make as much money as them. Once your website kind of plateaus at whatever level it is, five grand a month, 10 grand a month, 20 grand a month, hopefully, it's quite difficult to break through into those upper echelons of because some people do make from the ad revenue for example some people make up to 100 grand a month pretty crazy i know not so much in the travel niche but in other niches um, but most people don't of course and it's a, a lot easier once you understand how to monetize a website to monetize a second website it's easier to bring a second website from zero to three grand a month than it is to make your 20 grand a month site go to 30 or 40 or 50 grand. It's because it becomes so competitive at the top, right? So it's much smarter, Pareto principle and all that, for you to allocate your time. Now you know how to, to drag up new sites to two grand a month, even a grand a month. Okay, now you've done that. Second one, third one, fourth one. And that's what's called a PBN, a private blog network. And that's when one blogger or one person owns a host of different blogs. And there's various benefits to that, apart from the fact that you make more money. For a start, with the sponsored content, for example, like Emirates could come to me and ask me to link to their new emirates.com forward slash flights to Italy. And they pay me 500 bucks to publish a piece of sponsored content. And I did that for years. And then I thought, God, wouldn't it be much better if I had a second website? So when, when the marketing girl contacts me, I can say, sure, I can do that for 500 bucks. Do you also want to do it on my second website for another hundred? Call it a six hundred dollar deal. Sure. How about we do three blog posts for seven hundred? How about we do twenty blog posts for two grand across twenty of my sites? And you can upsell them. So people are coming to you warm, ready to buy adverts on your website, ready to buy sponsored content on your website. And suddenly, if you've got a network of sites, you can upsell them across your whole portfolio. And that is what made me a millionaire. That method. And most bloggers didn't do it and don't do it. Um, and, you know, I've, over the year, over the last 10 years, like I'm an OG blogger and a lot of the original bloggers have all fallen by the wayside. There's only a handful left because life as you get older, like I'm 39 now, becomes expensive. You want to have kids, you want to have a house, you want to go to private school, blah, blah, blah. And if, if your blog's still only pulling in $500 a month or a, a grand a month, that's cool in your 20s, like traveling around Southeast Asia. And that's cool. But as you get into your like 30s, mid 30s, you need to make real money if you want to live a comfortable life. And so many fall by the wayside. And it makes me really sad and also frustrates me because if those people can make $500 a month from one blog or a grand a month or two grand a month from one blog, they know how to do that. 
start a second blog, third blog, fourth blog. And actually back in like 2012, 2013, 2014, when I first started working out how to do this, I ended up having like over a hundred sites. A lot of them were crap, but I had loads. And that's when I started making like 50 grand a month, 60 grand a month, because I could just constantly upsell across this whole network. Another benefit of having a PBN, a private blog network, is um, when I create a new piece of content, like this, let's go back to this Bangkok itinerary blog post. If I write this big blog post, there's 50,000 people a month searching for Bangkok itinerary, for example. I write this blog, blog post, the ultimate Bangkok itinerary, and I write a big piece of content then when that piece of content go, goes live on onestepforward.com, I can use my other websites to link to this new piece of content. And that's telling the Google God again, oh, this Bangkok itinerary article that Johnny's written, this must be really good. Look at all these other websites linking to it. Wow, okay, we should put that on page one. So you can also help out your own sites within that. So I see some questions here, guys. I'll try to get these questions now shortly when I'm finishing up. Um, yeah, I'll get to all these questions later, I hope. Uh, how long are we in here? 57 minutes, all right. So yes, I hope you can see the value of a PBN. It is a lot of work, of course, because you need to have those sites built. You need to have content for all those sites. And back in the day, like 10 years ago, five years ago, um, I used to have like, at, at my max, I had maybe six guys working in sales, selling uh, sponsored content across all my network of sites. And I had like two or three full-time writers and I had uh, a tech guy who still works for me managing all the websites. Um, but it was so lucrative and the profit margin like you can sell sponsor sponsored content, your profit margin. And this is a big thing about when you, when I talk, when I, cause I'm very open, right? I used to be poor and now I'm not. So I hope that doesn't come across cocky. Like I hope my openness can help people understand how easy it is to make money online. And, um, the thing about, about selling sponsored content, for example, that's different to like selling sneakers is there's no cost to me to sell that. The profit margin is 99.9%. So if you make, like if you make a million dollars in, in the UK or in the US, cost of living, then you get taxed and who knows how much the product costs and what you're left with. Living like as a digital nomad or living in Thailand, registering your home, your uh business in Hong Kong, you make a million dollars, your profit margin is 99.9%. You pay no tax because it's in Hong Kong. And then you keep 999,900 quid. Whereas it's living in the West and I'm working for a company. It's a very different story to that. So it's both lucrative and a smart way to live your life. Okay. Anyway, another side to a PBN, which is very popular, especially for any Twitter users is something called a niche site. And this is a very good way to build a PBN. So you have what I call your cornerstone site, your flagship site, it's your baby. And, and, and it should be something that you love and, and you're in love with. And I feel like that about one step forward, I would never sell it. it, it it's chronic with my journey from being broke to, to being where I am now. And, and I really hope it's helped other people from single parents knowing that they can do cool stuff and make money online and blah, blah, blah. Um, so you have this passion project that you never fall out of love with because it actually is close to your heart, whether that's in travel or fitness or whatever it is. That's You build that as your main cornerstone site. And then you build your PBN by building what's called niche sites. Nowadays, with so many websites online, you can't. it's pretty difficult just to start a travel blog or, what, or a fitness blog because there's so many online. Um, but don't worry, most of them are crap. There's always space for quality. So don't ever think, oh, it's too late. It's not at all. If you've got your shit together, it's it's quite easy still to do. And the, the difference nowadays in 2023 and beyond is that it has to be quite niche. So you wouldn't start a travel blog. You would start a Thailand blog. You wouldn't start a fitness blog. You would start a men in their 30s fitness blog, a more specific niche. And you would build authority in that niche. And that site would over time become, uh, it would end up with a higher DR if you remember. The DR that is the rating from zero to 100, your domain rating. And you want your, your PVN, your private blog network of all these niche sites. You want the DR to be high on all those sites. And if it is, that's how you make big money. So that's what a PBN is. And I couldn't recommend it highly enough. There's a few of me, people like me, who both some 
are the face of it like I am and some are doing it behind the scenes that I've made hundreds of thousands and millions of dollars doing this over the last 10 years living in Thailand and Bali and it's great just be careful of those snake oil salesmen these young 23 year old kids selling forex courses driving rented Lamborghinis those guys are full of shit people actually sitting at home who've been there and done it who aren't trying to sell you stuff they're the actual successes be careful of these flashy guys with their white teeth Let me just go on to the last slide here. Okay. So there's a lot, 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 lot more to talk about um, in terms of building your own blog and, and, and making that an authority in, in your space, in your niche. That's key. There's a lot more to talk about with keyword research. How to do your keyword research is very important. Once you learn that tool, it, it, like for me, it only takes literally maybe five minutes before I create my content. Now, when you start, it maybe takes half an hour, but it's everything. I hope you can see that. Like if you think you're going to write an article, as, as I said, about three days in Bangkok, search volume 2000, same article that you're going to write with, but titled Bangkok itinerary 50,000. So you're getting what 25 X returns, which means you'll make 25 times more money. And if you didn't do your key, keyword research, you don't get it. It means everything. Another way to make sure that you're, um, blog posts end up on page one where people are reading is how you structure your blog. And again, that's like a, a phone call on an, all in itself. Um, there's a lot of stuff online about that, or we can, anyone who wants to contact me, we can discuss it further, but you need to structure your blog post in a certain way that Google likes. And if you don't do that, you're not going to be on page one. Next one. Is an email list. You'll see that bloggers, any successful bloggers, always have an email list where you put your email into a website, into their website, and they collect your email. Um, email lists are far more valuable than social media followers on TikTok or Instagram or whatever because people are quite private about their email. Me too. It's rare that I would sign up for something. Um, so if they're trusting you with their email, that's like quite a nice bond that you have with the reader or the follower and then hopefully you'll only have managed to do that because you're trustworthy and above board and then if you ever do promote products or run trips for example like i do then you can email them and they've manually given you their email address so it's, it's a big leap of faith for them which means that uh they actually want to receive email emails from you whether it's your story or, or something that you're selling so that's quite lucrative and again just for a, a rough stat you should make one dollar per month off every thousand email subscribers you have if you're a good digital marketer so if you've got ten thousand subscribers you should make ten thousand dollars a month from your email list i don't do that i'm awful at it but um, there's many people who do it <laughs> i don't sell anything so that's a big bit of a problem for me i make all my money through the affiliate stuff and the sponsored content so i don't have anything to sell you guys so i don't make any money from my list um, and this is something I really am passionate about these days. I always say, I grew up, my mom had no money. We were on welfare. And and then when I started making all that, this crazy money, I didn't have a clue what to do with it. And I did a lot of stupid things with it. And now it's been 10 years of me making good money. I feel like after literally a decade of research, um, my money is now working for me. And, it, and there's a few very simple things that people can do with their money to guarantee that your money starts to work for you that I wish... I had had a wealthy friend or like a, a wealthy uncle who could have taught me about that stuff. So if anyone finds themselves in that situation, let me know. And I can, I can be that uncle for you guys. Um, and I guess we'll call it a day there because otherwise if I go into any of these topics, each one's like a whole nother hour or a hundred hours. So I think maybe we should call it a day there. We're about an hour in it's midnight here in Thailand too. My missus is going to be furious. <laughs> Thank you. That was a lot of amazing information. Yeah, a lot of information. I know. Shall I answer these some of these questions? Yeah, I think let's, you know, let's go another 10 or so minutes. If people have to leave, absolutely, this is going to be recorded or it has been recorded and it will be shared with you. So no worries. We know we're going over, but there are so many good questions. And Johnny, if you've got 10 extra minutes, why don't we try to get through some of these? How does that sound? Yeah. Cool. Do you need a sip of water? You good? Oh no, I'm good. I'm an Irish <laughs> man. We're, we're we're born talking, coming out of the womb. Amazing. Okay, so both Emma, a couple of people asked about AI, and I think that's important to just address right at the beginning. So a question is about 
is it true that if you use chat GTP, chat, chat GPT or AI that Google will blog will block that article and it can't be monetized? No, it's completely not true, but it could happen. So it's very dangerous. There's two really pertinent issues with ChatGPT. For a start, every blogger now uses it to build the spine of their content, right? Because it's just such a shortcut. And then if you're an ethical, true blogger, you'll write over the top of it. And that's cool. There's two things about using ChatGPT exclusively. If you're doing it as a cash grab, like I've got a really good Austrian friend, Manuel, who just lives around the corner in, in my uh, village here. And he's started a load of niche websites I discussed using only chat GPT, like about crappy topics that he doesn't care about. And he's just trying to make as much money as possible while Google is not penalizing AI content, right? But it's a race against time because eventually they're going to penalize it. Um, so if you're doing it just to make money in niches that you don't care, good luck. You may make it in time, but at any time, Google will update their algorithm and not favor AI content because ultimately... If everyone's using AI content, AI, AI needs to scrape that information from somewhere, right? And they need to like, they scrape it from people like me who actually spend my money and my time to go to the Congo. And then when people are asking like how to go to the Congo, they're getting that content from me. If, any, if everyone's just using ChatGPT, who's going to write the real content? And Google also knows this too. They, they don't want to disincentivize people writing real content. So there'll be a, there'll be a day that that it will be penalized. So if you're doing it on your flagship blog, it's very dangerous to rely entirely on ChatGPT. Also, you don't, you don't own the IP if you copy and paste directly from ChatGPT. Okay, so it sounds like maybe some, maybe some short-term wins, but long-term, this is yeah. not a strategy and it's not gonna be your ticket to getting rich as a blogger by leveraging this. Okay. No. A couple of people wanted to follow up on keyword research. So both Cameron and Tanisha asked about this. You talked about how effective keyword research can be and really the difference it can mean at 30xing, 50xing oh, yeah. your results. So what is the website that you use for that or tools you use for that? Yeah. So there, there's two huge players in the game. One's called SEMrush and one's called Ahrefs. But don't worry about writing those down, everybody. They're really expensive. They're like 300 bucks a month. Like only do that if you're making 5K a month plus. Right? Don't sign up for those. They are great, but you don't need them. I use something called keysearch.co and it's, I don't know, 9.99 or 7.99 or 11.99 or something. And it's completely adequate. Amazing. Keysearch.co. Okay, I have it open too. Yeah, yeah. it's great. And I, I let that, that stays open permanently on my Chrome tab, literally permanently open. Okay, awesome. How do you think Google SGE will affect blogging? I wish I knew what Google SGE is. No do you? No you don't know. <laughs> okay, it was an anonymous attendee, so I can't even call it out. Got it. No. Um, uh, how would you build a travel blog to something like an authority site similar to Lonely Planet, Travel and Leisure, Condé Nest? So I think just some tips around travel blogs in general would be helpful. Don't do something so generic and wide and open because you'll never have topical authority nowadays. It needs to be more niche, whether it's like budget backpacking, van life, like beaches, mm. it, it can't ha that open-ended unlimited content. It's just too big. You'll never rank and you'll end up spreading yourself so thin that nothing will rank. Whereas if you choose a niche, you can, you can, once you're dominant in that niche, then you can spread out, but to start so thin, you'll never rank. Yeah, no, that's really great advice. And what would you say your, how has your niche evolved over the years since you had your blog? For me, because my domain rating is so high in the travel blog industry, that's maybe like fourth or fifth in the whole industry. So I can rank for quite competitive stuff. But my situation is a bit more unique because I do all these wild adventures and stuff. Like I said, like mainstream media often feature my story. So I like their link, those links are are like worth thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars per link to me. And I something like if I when I like when I climbed Everest last month, I maybe got a hundred of them or more. That's like way over a hundred grand's worth of SEO that I get for free. So that, and that elevates my site without me having to like because there's a lot of bloggers who, are, who create better content 
than I do. Like I'm quite lazy. I, like I said, I prioritize my life ahead of my blog. Um, but because I get all these links, it, it keeps me competitive. Amazing. Okay, final couple questions. Liz, in the PBN, should the websites have related topics? And then let's throw in any advice on how long your content should be. We'll wrap up with those questions from Liz and Cameron. Yeah, with content, it's wild. Like the algorithm, basically with the Google algorithm, like when you become obsessed with SEO, they do, it constantly evolves, right? And like literally constantly, every day, they've got a team of people, like thousands of people in a warehouse churning out code, right? Trying to make sure that the results that finish first, second, third are the best. And it's endless. And that changes like tweaks every day. And they never release, they don't do any press releases. They never talk about what changes. But some of the best SEO in the world, Chiang Mai actually where I am, is the number one SEO hub in the world. It's quite a weird little uh, sub niche. And some of the best guys in the world live here and they just constantly are testing it. So it's those guys that let the cat out of the bag of oh, now Google favor stuff that's had social media shares. Okay. Now they favor stuff that's da, 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 da. anyway, long story short, it's absolutely obsessed with long, 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 long form content at the moment. So 2000 words minimum, but if you can be faced doing like four or 5,000, God, it's a lot, but that's what it, Google is loving that at the moment. Hmm. And so Which, these people, good. Sorry, sorry. And, that, and actually, it's very annoying. This is why the algorithm is quite frustrating if you work in SEO, because if you Google, like, how many minutes do I need to boil an egg? You don't want four fucking thousand words. Do you know what I mean? But that's what Google's putting first. You just want a big how to boil an egg.com and then a big thing saying four minutes or whatever and, and see you later. But that's mm -hmm. not how it works. <laughs> Mm -hmm. It's like, let's talk about the evolution of the egg. The first time someone boiled an egg, here are the different use cases for boiling exactly. eggs. Exactly. And no. if you work in SEO, that's what they're doing. They're, they're filling it out so it ranks. Yeah. No, I totally feel you. It sounds like you have some people in your industry that you follow, that you look up to for this cutting edge information. Because uh, I know you're not the person testing all these SEOs all these time, but you must look to these people. What are some of your favorite resources? Are there people that you're following social media or subscribing to their newsletters? How do you find out this yeah, information? Like, these guys are like guys who live indoors 23 hours a day. I love it. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> like there are plain, like brain spotters in their previous life and now they're SEO. <laughs> they make a fortune though. Fair play to them. But I mean, God, I would hate, I would hate to do that. You just hear it. Like I, you see it. Twitter is the best place for this kind of stuff, to be honest. SEO Twitter is really, really good for it. Okay. So just following people on Twitter. Now there's a really, there's quite a famous guy called Matt G uh, Diggity. He lives in Chiang Mai. He's one of the best in the world. And he talks a lot about it. Matt Diggity. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Johnny. If people wanted to learn more from you, what is the best way for them to follow you? Of course, there's your blog, but do you have any other resources where we yeah, can continue? You can hit me on Instagram with one step forward too. Like I said, on the, on the rare occasions that I'm stationary for a month, I do do some coaching sometimes. I'm actually coaching a guy from Wales tomorrow. So you can, if you're really interested, you can, you can drop me a DM and say, but I'm off to bloody... Iraq, Turkmenistan, Syria, Cyprus, and everything in about three weeks. So it'll, it'll be a while. Yeah, no, that's fair. We respect that. And we really respect your time. Thank you so much for coming on here and sharing all of that with us. It has been recorded. We'll be sharing the replay. And if you want to join Johnny in our ambassador program, we accept anybody. It probably takes like five minutes to sign up and you can become an affiliate or an ambassador for Safe Doing Too and monetize your blog if you are creating anything related to remote work, digital nomadism, travel, I don't know, just security and being safe. I think you could throw some things in there. So yeah, join us. Johnny and I are both in the program. All right, Johnny. Thank you so much, everybody. We're going to end things here now. Bye. All right. Thanks, guys. Sorry if it was a bit too information dense. That's the reality of blogging. <laughs> That's what we want. Thank you.